Maybe Theresa May's greatest blessing, Stephen Kinnock, is that on the Labour benches, you're quite happy, aren't you, for them to, to carry on with this and to, and, and to see what sort of mess that they make. The last thing Labour wants at this point is to have to pick up these negotiations, isn't it? Well, you know, I think the Chequers proposal, as I said, was a step in the right direction, but it's still completely off beam in terms of what we actually need, which is the clarity and stability and certainty of the European Economic Area Agreement that's existed since 1993. It's the only way that we can give business and communities up and down the country the certainty and the stability they so desperately need. I mean, she's come up with this bureaucratic nightmare, a fudge of all sorts of different unworkable solutions that nobody actually understands. What so would I you do then? Well, how, would, how would you keep everyone happy in the Labour Party then? Because I'm not sure that anyone t fully understands that. Well, I've been pushing for almost two years now for us to sign up to the European Economic Area. Well, that wouldn't keep everyone happy, would it? I mean, that, that, would, that, would, that would create as much of a storm as, as this Chequers agreement has, in, in, in fact, possibly even well, more so. Well, po politics, and one thing I agreed with Glyn on, po politics isn't about keeping absolutely everybody happy. It's about leadership and building a consensus and delivering for the country and putting your country before your party. Unfortunately, isn't that what Theresa May has done? Uh, well, no, because why on earth has it taken us two years to get where we are now? That She spent her entire time internal management of the Conservative Party ahead of the national interest. And I'm afraid that was the same story with David Cameron. We have now this line of Conservative leaders who put the psychodrama of the Conservative Party about Europe ahead but, of the national well, interest. Yeah, but but and watching, it, watching it, proceedings in the Commons yesterday, as Theresa May kept underlying that she felt that what, what happened at Chequers was the best deal for the country, and the fact that she was has been prepared to risk losing uh, David Davis and Boris Johnson over this, which is, which is indeed what happened, and who knows may else, who else may follow, doesn't that tell you that's exactly what she's done, is she's put the country before her party on this? I uh, credit where credit's due. She's taken a step in the right direction with Chequers, and she has faced down the hard, ideologically driven Brexiteers in her party. And I'm, I'm saying absolutely credit where credit's due. But the devil is in the detail, and the proposal she's putting forward is still an attempt. And she's still trying to sell a soft Brexit as a hard Brexit. She's still trying to face both ways and play the game of internal party management. She should just move forward now. She should have put a, a, an all-out Remainer in the position to replace David Davis. Instead, she's now got somebody who's supposed to be going into bat for Britain, bat for the national interest on the basis of the Czechist proposal, which I think is deeply flawed. Well, yeah. She's got a guy there who believes that we should make a bonfire of workers' rights, who believes that leaving the EU is actually an opportunity to turn our country into a, a European version of the Cayman Islands. But she's got a Remainer in the really Foreign Office the now, right hasn't man. she? So that's, uh, th there's a bit of balance there. And, yeah, and for the you... the Brexit job is the key job. Well, right is it, now. though? Because that's all been run from number 10 now, as we understand it. But um, uh, just finally well, to 